Welcome to Taiwan Report News Brief, news analysis and context from Taichung, Taiwan. I'm Donovan Smith. All right, up today in the program, the citizen judge law passes over united opposition. The passport and China Airlines legislation passes, but it's just a suggestion. Jane Lee's campaign is under pressure as she tearfully rejects her own master's degree. Foreign minister warns to the media that the Chinese military threat is on the rise. And finally, the U.S. Democratic Party draft party platform is more pro-Taiwan. But up first, a passel of headlines. Final year foreign students who have been stranded abroad due to Taiwan's border restrictions amid the pandemic will be permitted to return with effect immediately, the Ministry of Education said on Wednesday. Starting August 1st, foreign visitors seeking medical care will also be allowed to enter Taiwan once they meet certain requirements, the Central Epidemic Command Center said on Wednesday. The opening will apply to foreign patients seeking treatment in all areas of health care except physical health checks and cosmetic surgery. The Ministry of Transportation and Communications is temporarily suspending its funding to promote, to promote tours to Ilan, Hualien and Taidong counties, as well as outlying islands, and would instead focus on promoting tours to the West Coast. Over 1.35 million people in Taiwan have signed up to receive 500 NT vouchers towards sports-related spending as of Tuesday morning, just one day after their launch online, according to the Ministry of Education. Some 2.1 million people in Taiwan have won Arts Fun Go electronic cultural vouchers, each worth 600 NT. They were issued by the Ministry of Culture on Tuesday. The Taiwan government will allocate 18.7 billion NT for the development or procurement of a COVID-19 vaccine, the Central Epidemic Command Center also said on Wednesday. Of that amount, 13.5 billion NT will be spent on research and development in Taiwan or procurement of a vaccine from an overseas source, while 5.2 billion will be held as a reserve fund. It's smart. They're preparing for both eventualities. Taiwan produced 258.72 million metric tons of carbon emissions from burning fuel in 2019, down 3.15 percent compared to a year earlier, according to the Ministry of Economic Affairs. It is the second consecutive year of reduction since the country's total emissions reached an all-time high of 269.46 million metric tons in 2017. DGBAS data showed that the jobless rate in June was 3.96%, down 0.11 percentage points from a month earlier, as domestic business activities picked up after months of slowdown due to the pandemic. The Zhonghua Institution for Economic Research has raised its forecast for Taiwan's economic growth in 2020 to 1.77%, up from 1.03%, because of a pickup in economic activity as COVID-19 fears ease and spending vouchers are issued to consumers. Taiwan was listed in 13th place in the 2020 Autonomous Vehicles Readiness Index, which is published by KPMG and covers one of the most advanced areas of transport technology. Stephen Chen, Chen Wenzheng, head of the Renewable Infrastructure, Government and Healthcare at KPMG Taiwan, said that while Taiwan lags behind some Western countries in terms of relevant legislation and infrastructure, It was the highlight of this year's AVRI index because it ranked 13 ahead of Germany, Australia, and France. That is significant, of course, because both Germany and France are leaders in automotive manufacturing. Out of 49 countries ranked for their handling of the coronavirus pandemic, Taiwan came in first, a Japanese survey concluded on Wednesday. 
Speaking of being a world leader, Taiwan's leading convenience store chain, 7-Eleven, has announced the opening of the world's first Hello Kitty-themed store in downtown Taipei's Ximending area. Taiwan is among the first 22 countries listed by the Kingdom of Jordan in its announcement of the reopening of its borders in August. That's interesting. Usually Taiwan's not in the first wave. I'm also still wondering if Jordan is the mysterious country that there was a report recently that said that Taiwan's military was training in an unnamed Middle Eastern country. I don't know. It's one of my guesses. Hong Kong and Australia have been removed from a list of COVID-19 low-risk countries and regions due to a recent spike in new cases. The two staff members of the Taipei, uh, sorry, two staff members of the Taipei-based Hong Kong Economic Trade and Cultural Office have returned home to Hong Kong after their residence permits were rejected, Hong Kong's Constitutional and Mainland Affairs Bureau said. The Mainland Affairs Council here in Taiwan hasn't confirmed this, but if it's true, this is likely in response to Hong Kong denying visas to Taiwan Taiwan representatives for refusing to sign a One China pledge. U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper said Tuesday during a speech given to the London-based International Institute for Strategic Studies, <gasps> the PLA's large-scale exercise to simulate the seizure of the Taiwan-controlled Pratis Island is a destabilizing activity that significantly increases the risk of miscalculation. With regard to Taiwan, he said, quote, we will continue to conduct arms sales. We will continue to conduct freedom of navigation operations, and that includes in the Taiwan Strait. As expected, the DPP used its majority in the legislative UN to pass the Citizen Judges Act in spite of all other party caucuses united against them. Under the act, criminal trials at district courts that involve offenses subject to a minimum of 10 years in prison will involve a panel of judges made up of three professional judges and six citizen judges. Citizen judges have to be at least 23 years old, have graduated from high school or the equivalent, and have lived in the area under the jurisdiction of the district court for a minimum of four months. Now, this is odd as they're pushing to lower the voting age to 18. Hmm. Under the Citizen Judges Act, at least two-thirds of the nine judges, including at least one professional judge, must find the defendant guilty for a guilty verdict to be handed down. And the same two-thirds majority, including a professional judge, is needed to hand down the death penalty. President Tsai wrote on Facebook that this, quote, kicks off a new era of people's participation in the joint trial, joint verdict judiciary. All other parties in the legislature support a jury system, something the DPP used to advocate for. The legislature unanimously passed two resolutions that asked the executive branch of government to highlight Taiwan on both the country's passports and aircraft used by flagship carrier China Airlines. The resolutions put forth by the ruling Democratic Progressive Party won support from all 64 legislators attending the extraordinary session, which included representatives of all party caucuses except for the main opposition KMT. KMT caucus whip Lin Weizhou criticized the vote as a show and said his party did not wish to join. Legislative resolutions are considered to be suggestions and are not enforceable. However, it is likely that the government will take some kind of action on it. On the China Airlines issue, the DPP said the Ministry of Transportation and Communications should take a phased approach to change the carrier's name starting with showing more distinctive symbols on Taiwan on its planes. Such a change should be carried out without hurting Taiwan's freedoms of the air privileges, the DPP argued. A cabinet spokesman said the MOTC and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will review symbols of Taiwan to be used on Chinese Airlines aircraft, passports, and Ministry of Foreign Affairs business cards.
A report in Mirror Media exploded yesterday with the allegation that 96% of KMT Kaohsiung mayoral candidate Jane Lee, or Lee Mei Jun's thesis, at the National Sun Yat-sen University's Institute of Mainland China Studies was plagiarized. Things then moved fast. Initially, Lee fought back with a 57-second press conference, calling the allegations a political attack, and said she would respond using the standard of President Tsai ing response regarding her thesis. Now, that was in reference to a conspiracy theory that, for some reason, the prestigious London School of Economics, the president's alma mater, conspired with her to award her a degree without a thesis or conspired to hide it. Now, her thesis indeed had gone missing for a while, which someone I know personally confirmed, but it had been misplaced and was eventually found. The core of the conspiracy theory requires us to believe that either LSE was conspiring with an unknown young student nobody from an unimportant family from a little country on the other side of the planet, or time travel. There is a long history of political attacks using a politician's thesis in Taiwan, and is bipartisan. There was a lot of lies spread about former KMT President Ma ying thesis as well. Jane Lee was trying to turn this story into just another political smear and distract with the Tsai thesis conspiracy theory. It started to fall apart quickly as the details appeared to pan out that she'd copied extensively from two authors, including, ironically, one from the DPP camp. The university said that if Lee violated academic ethics, as alleged, her master's degree would be revoked. Then, today, she held another press conference, apologized, and tearfully said she was renouncing her degree, which I assume confirms the allegations are correct. This has left the KMT and party chair Johnny Chang scrambling, trying to keep up with the twists and turns. Chang has come out in support for Lee's renouncement, saying he was glad she was facing the issue. There are already calls for the party to replace her as a candidate, but so far the party has refused. This comes as the KMT is at its lowest point in its modern history, hitting record lows in the polls, having been crushed for the second time in a row in national elections, and had their Kaohsiung mayor unceremoniously dumped in a recall. Their reputation is in tatters, and now this. The party has been concerned they could drop below the Taiwan People's Party in the polls, and in fact, actually had and won, putting them in third place. Now, it's possible this scandal could put them behind the TPP candidate in the August 15th mayoral by-election. That would further the impression that they are falling behind. For Johnny Chang personally, it is also a disaster. There are already calls for him to shoulder the blame, and there were already calls for him to step down if the result in the by-election was embarrassingly bad. That looks very likely to happen now. Chang has been working hard on trying to get reform pa plans passed in the party congress in September. This makes his plans that much harder. And even if he doesn't take down, take, he doesn't step down to take responsibility, his authority will have been weakened. Foreign Minister Joseph Wu said on Wednesday, quote, looking on the long term trend, China appears to be gradually stepping up its military preparedness, especially in air or on waters near Taiwan. What China is doing now is continuing to ramp up preparedness to solve the Taiwan issue, he said. The threat is on the rise. Interestingly, this Taiwan issue part was translated by the Associated Press as Taiwan problem, which is unlikely to be accurate because I'm sure Joseph Wu would never say something like that. Wu said such intrusions happen almost every day in June and were much more frequent than what the government had disclosed to the public. He said China has also made several simulated military attacks on Taiwan. He added, these behaviors worry us and said that Taiwan was deepening its security ties with allies, including the United States. Technically, the United States is not an ally. But moving on. Speaking of the United States, a draft copy of the Democratic Party platform has been circulating on Twitter and it has some welcome wording. Democrats are committed to the Taiwan Relations Act and will continue to support a peaceful resolution of cross-strait issues, 
consistent with the wishes and best interests of the people of Taiwan. As the awesome Ye Jieting editor at Ketagalan Media commented, that's a lot better than the to be decided by the Chinese on either side of the strait, which is typical of the kinds of languages used in the past in the U.S., Traditionally in the U.S., the Republicans have been more openly supportive of Taiwan, but recently there have been signs of a shift in the Democratic Party towards Taiwan. Hopefully the Taiwan part of the drill will make it into the final version. All right, I'm super pleased to welcome Patsy, our newest and biggest patron on Patreon so far. Thank you very, very much, Patsy. You and all our patrons are a big part of keeping this project going and growing, and you made my day. All right, hit like and subscribe. Check us out on report.tw. There's more stories I didn't cover and more detail. And be sure to check into the next show, and I'll probably be going into an article breakdown on Ke Wenzhou's recent comments. This has been brought to you by the Taiwan Report. For more content like this, become our patron at report.tw.